something for your competition. What are you running for your competition? So right now I use a G47. Okay. Um, it's basically a 17 length slide, 17 length frame mm -hmm. uh, with a 19 recoil system. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you? I'm running an Infinity 2011 right now. Oh, big daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm what? having a lot of fun with that. Welcome to another episode of the Coley on Noir podcast and joining me is T and Jen. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, that's what you get for trying to <laughs> confuse me <laughs> the first time. No, T and Jen. Yes. All right. How's it going, guys? Good, good. Good, good. Okay. So, you are a shooter for Glock. Mm -hmm. And you are. I'm a free agent. You're a free agent. So ah, wants to pick me up. Okay, 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 okay. We'll have to we'll have to get you picked up at some point. <laughs> uh, figure that. Out. So like, competitive shooting is not exactly something that people just jump into initially. Or what was the kind of genesis for you all to get into competitive shooting? Was it you just woke up one day and was like, I'm gonna just start shooting competitively, or was there like a progressive, mm -hmm. gradual? Well, for me, it was just like I never heard of comp competition shooting before, mm -hmm. ever. Um, I, Jen and I, we both actually picked up our first ever pistols in 2020. Really? And then we just eventually like went to the range every day, mm -hmm. met so, you know certain people, and then they introduced us to competition shooting. Uh -huh. But we were like, "What is this?" And yeah. so we just kind of <laughs> went straight into that. Yeah. Um, within like three months of buying our first gun. So what? So what got you into guns in the first place? So. Um, so mostly like it was during COVID, mm -hmm. um, she had purchased her first carry gun. So we both had our licenses for a while, okay. but we never like took the chance uh, to purchase our own gun. Okay. Um, and then we took like a road trip, um, in 2020 of February and she showed me her carry gun. And so I was like, okay, cool. And so I was like, I, you know, I've had my license for a while okay. and then that kind of got me to get my own gun. So we started hitting the range together, like three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there we just like practice on our own and then got into competition shooting <laughs> that's pretty badass that's pretty badass i started going down that road a little bit mm -hmm. and i just realized i sucked <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, was just, I saw a couple it, of your videos um, you, have, yeah. did you see the first ones i, I don't know there's a yeah. there's it's oh god i'm gonna embarrass myself again all right peter can you pull up the my first idpa competition oh it was idpa <laughs> yeah, so you don't touch everything right you're like okay yeah you know watch it's it was pretty bad it was pretty bad i kind of did it as a way uh, for people to kind of follow along with me and mm -hmm. like my journey, yeah, um, so that they could see the progression if there was ever any progression. <laughs> um, just type in Colin Noir IDP Diaries. Wait for the ad. Oh, there it is. But um, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh god. Yeah, look at this baby that is face. So embarrassing. Look, look at look at that young little. Oh, you look like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many years ago was this? This was when was this, Peter? Uh, this was uh, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Your skin's so smooth. I know. Oh, that, that was, see, y'all didn't know about, they already had the filters before uh -oh. filters became a thing. So I was taking advantage of the filters. And So yeah, so this is my first IDPA competition. And it, yeah, yeah as you can see. Reload. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you judging oh, me right now? No. Uh, this is impressive. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's utterly embarrassing. And I think I was running, what was that? That was, I was running a Glock 19 uh, RTF 2 frame with the fish, with the fish gills and the moons and a like super, super aggressive grip on it. Mm -hmm. um, I love that gun so much. Look at this one. Look at those cargo shorts. pants. Why am I dressed like this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate myself. Is this guy coaching you right now? Yeah, he's kind of just giving me some advice on okay. how to not embarrass myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like that was that was kind of like my foray into the comp competitive shooting side, and I kind of stopped because the content production side of it kind of started taking over, kind and so that's yeah, and then the political easy. stuff started taking over, yeah. and then before you know it, it was yeah, it's like been a while since I was supposed to. You should come actually. to a match with us. <sighs> yeah, have you done a USPSA match? Mm -mm. Hmm. Mm. Nope, I haven't. Um, I've the only matches, only competitive shooting I've done. I did I recently did a PRS match. <laughs> a PRS match? Yeah. Okay. I did one of those, um, and I think actually, I, ooh, I think that was about it. Recently, yeah, that's as recent that those are the competitions that I've done, um, and I didn't embarrass myself too bad in a PRS match. Not too too bad, <laughs> but it was definitely. 
I was definitely swimming in deep waters. I heard those are fun. Yeah. Yeah. They are fun. They are fun. Once you kind of get the hang of it and the rhythm of mm-hmm. things and start to understand all of everything that goes into it, it definitely, it, it's, I enjoyed myself to say the least. That's like USPSA too. I yeah. feel like, you know, nerves, it's really nerve wracking your first match probably. Mm-hmm. But once you get used to all the rules and like what you're, what you need to do in a match and, you know, proper procedures and things like that, like yeah. it's just fun. It's just so much fun. So for you, what is so what is your favorite gun to run for your competition? What are you running for your competitions? So right now I use a G forty seven. Okay. Um, it's basically a seventeen length slide, seventeen length frame mm-hmm. uh, with a nineteen recoil system. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, and then you? I'm running an Infinity twenty eleven right now. Oh, big daddy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm what? having a lot of fun with that. How long did it take you to get that? Um, did you? Where'd you? I shot you? like. I shot like production division, like uh-huh. kind of. Well, like, no, no. I mean, how did you get the infinity? How long? How long did it take you to get the infinity? infinity. Oh, how long? Uh-huh. Um, I'm a little. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little jealous. That's all. Yeah. I kind of got talked into it. Like We're, I wasn't planning you got to go talked through. into. Getting yeah, infinity. I wasn't planning to go into open, and then uh-huh. um, I shot hers for the first time. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, this is really nice, and so I posted it, and then this guy that was selling was like, hey, I got a deal for you. Uh, okay, okay, so, all right, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I was that was good. probably like a year and a half or two years, maybe mm-hmm. almost two years. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I need. I don't. I don't even own an Infinity. I saw you shoot one. Yeah, there. that was a, that's a friend of mine's. Mm. So and you could probably take because it's old. Yeah. Like he has yeah. a really old one, but even still, it's absolutely. You need to get one. It's I do. So the problem is, is I had this thing called instant gratification problems, <laughs> and I don't like waiting. So that's literally why I haven't been like. I think the waiting list is like like a year and a half. Yes, yeah, so I'm years. stupid. Um, and I, I, I found a couple that were secondhand, uh-huh. and I've almost bought it, almost. But I'm like, part of me's like, if I'm gonna have one, I just want to be able to do yeah. it exactly. Um, but then again, I'm pretty sure I'll come across one that I love, and I'm like, all right, I'll just go ahead. You might and do love it. mine. Thinking oh. about selling one. Oh, really? Now? Mm-hmm. Oh, Maybe. this is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Got a picture of it? Mm, I do. Uh, it's on my Instagram, Peter. Right. If you want to pull that one up, it's like right. somewhere yeah, in the see, middle. Let's see this infinity. Her name is Toasty. Toasty. Yeah, I named her Toasty. Toasty. That's okay, so what's number. the name? That's her what? That's her serial number. Toasty. Oh, that's the actual. Oh, because yeah, you can customize. Oh, yep. okay. So what's the what's the story behind Toasty? It's just you know you you can you can get Toasty splits on it. Like, you know, <laughs> it's badass. Fair enough. Do you name your guns too? Mine's actually named two Mikes. <laughs> I'm so lost. Uh, I didn't okay. name it. I didn't name it though. You, uh, so who named it? The previous owner since I bought it. Oh, bought it. so it had the name already. Yeah. Wait, so you're not allowed to change the name? Well, the serial it's number serial is. Number. Oh yeah. God, you're right. It is the actual <laughs> two serial mics. number. Yeah, that's the serial number. <laughs> Did he tell you a story behind that? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> is this it? Yep. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's actually a very good looking one. Pretty. Uh, is it greedy? <laughs> I said pretty. Oh. <laughs> Why do you want to sell it? I like my Glocks. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it shooting with Glock? Man, they treat me really well. Mm-hmm. Um, get to travel pretty much all over across the nation with them. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, they they support me, and you know, it's just yeah. been really awesome. Yeah, I don't think the higher ups and management over there like me pretty much. Oh, I, don't, yeah? I don't think they like me that. very much. So. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have any confirmation of it. Mm. It's just. The way I do some of my videos, I kind of treat Glock like a, um, you know, like, are, do any of you have siblings? Yes. yes. Are you nice to your siblings? Yeah. You are? Most, most of the okay. time. Okay. <laughs> so, so I don't have any siblings. So oh. I have a very bastardized version of what that type of relationship would be like. So I kind of treat Glock like a sibling you don't like, but you love. <laughs> yeah. So I've made a couple of videos bemoaning certain things and, um. Let's just say I'm pretty sure I've I'm pr- probably not. They don't have any posters of me at the Glock <laughs> facility at all. Um, but I but I do. I do love their guns by and large. I just don't like the 17. Mm. It's just what do you it, not like about the 17? Um, it is nothing objective. It's all subjective. They're, the way the gun fits in my hand, I, it just does not work for me. Mm-hmm. That's it, because I absolutely love the 19X. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 17. 
And the same thing with the 45, That's too. weird because, this, you know, it's the same grip angle. Everything like that. Everyone, that, that everyone makes, when yeah. I do the video, everyone in the comments, is the same? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I know, I know, yeah. I know. I said it in the video. It doesn't yeah. make sense. But for whatever reason, I don't like it. And I think also I'm not a fan of, uh, of longer slides on my guns. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to like them. So I kind of like longer grip, shorter slide. Length. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. So I think that adds to it as well. Gotcha. Um, that makes me kind of like, Mm, just like finding the, the perfect fan. balance of exactly the yeah because i like i like my slice to track really fast mm -hmm. and so it, and then perceptively if i can feel that motion coming back and forth mm -hmm. even though they're running at the same damn speed it's tracking the same just psychologically yeah it just makes me feel better no, yeah i feel the same way yeah. um i like snappier slides or snappier yeah. you know recoil gotcha. as well so like that's why i choose the 47 versus the 34 and, and that's chambered in nine nine mm -hmm. nine okay yeah. do you ever shoot any other calibers no, no, just nine. Just nine? Yeah. No, why? For fun, I've shot like a 40 before, mm -hmm. but that was just like at the range and there was a test demo gun there and I tried it. Gotcha. I tried like 22, but that's it. But nine, nine that's is That's your good. thing? Mm -hmm. Is nine your jam as well? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, right now, well, the Infinity is like 38 Super Comp. Oh, really? So. Ah. It's, like it's like a very powerful nine. Not, yeah, I'm more, yeah, I'm familiar with that. So a lot of people don't realize that's, that's kind of how like the 2011 got started on like most of the people in the competition where we're shooting 2011s that were in 38 super um and people don't know that it's kind of like and i get it all the time they're like why don't they make any double stack 45s i was like you don't that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there's there were a few it didn't work it didn't work too well so um so from that perspective i feel like i'm a 2011 nut job at this point i'm obsessed with them what's your favorite gun Favorite gun of all time? Yes, of all time, if you had to choose one. Well, let's say pistol. Handgun, or are we talking yeah. like all platforms, Hand, or just kind of? Let's do handgun. It's <laughs> hard, huh? <laughs> it, it, they're, they're, they're rummaging in my head right now. I have, this has nothing to do with practicality, has nothing to do with like self-defense, or nothing, it's just purely like, I love this thing. I I absolutely love my Nighthawk 2011. I, I it is it's I have a weird attachment to it, and and it so happens to be one of the most expensive. No, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. I forgot about this one. I have the I have the John Wick three Ooh. box set. Um, those, even though I've only shot them once, but I'm gonna have to say that, and then with that Nighthawk being a close second. Um, okay. And with my staccato XC being a close third. Okay. Yeah, that's mine. All 2011. Yeah. So. I would ask you, but I already know what you're going to say. So <laughs> what is, <laughs> what would you, what would your favorite handgun my be? My favorite? I'm probably going to have to go with the Shadow 2, CZ Shadow 2. Really? Yeah. Did, did you, I'm, I'm, I don't assume anybody watches my videos, but have you happened to see my video on that one? I saw, I think I watched that one yeah. in the. Uh, the compact one is well. Com okay. The compact one is the one I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it doesn't feel the same. It's it, like a little bit snappier. It is, and I think from and it's again, it's for me, it's subjective. I I kept the way I would prep the trigger. Mm -hmm. It never made me feel comfortable. I think I feel the same way about the yeah. compact too. Yeah. Or like the, the shadow two compact. It's it's an excellent trigger, yeah. from the standpoint that it's incredibly clean. Yeah. It's very precise, almost too precise. <laughs> and I'm I'm kind of like I have these like small hobbit gorilla hands, and so I, my ability to kind of hit that wall exactly where I need to yeah. without. I'm trying to avoid saying indie, but <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it just like finding the wall yeah. on that one? It's just okay. a lot. Hard. It's hard for me, and I don't know if it's because I'm so used to running AR triggers, mm -hmm. um, but I struggle with finding that wall, slacking out, mm -hmm. and um, without sending around prematurely. <laughs> um, other than that, I think the gun is gorgeous. Yeah. I think it feels great in hand. I think the trigger, in and of itself, objectively is is amazing but for me and that's why i titled the video way i did i was like it just frustrates me because i can't get comfortable with the gun yeah um, train more yeah everybody says that <laughs> it, it do but just intuitively it just it didn't happen yeah and so now i still have it so i didn't get rid of it so clearly there's something there that i still like about it a lot um and largely because i think it's just a beautiful gun yeah. but it is 
I can see why that that would be your favorite. So I'm just gonna do myself a disservice anyway and ask her anyway uh -huh. what her favorite handgun is. <laughs> my favorite handgun is a 43X. It's my first gun that I, I bought. Yes, it's a Glock, but it is also my very, very first pistol that I bought. I carry it every day. <laughs> <He was> like, <laughs> <laughs> I carry it every day. It goes everywhere with me. It's my favorite. You know what, I actually believe you. If you had said any other Glock, I'd have been like, bullshit. Yeah, 43X. I, I, now, I did do a video, and it's probably one of the videos is the reason why I don't have a poster hanging up in the <laughs> Glock facilities. I did I got, did a video saying the 43X was trash. Um, it was kind of clickbaity. Um, what it was for me was I loved the 43X. I watched that video, it, actually, yeah, yeah. like very, very early on. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. yeah. It was clickbaity. Yeah, very clickbaity. I was like, why is it not a good gun? Yeah, but no, yeah. like you actually, you're like, oh, wow, 10 rounds you can fit on that's here. That's literally, that's my yeah. biggest, my, everything else about it was dead on I think it just I remember watching that one yeah. as well yeah, yeah. it's it's a it, it i loved it because it was basically i was like thank you you gave me a 19x carry gun essentially mm -hmm. right and that within that micro compact space of firearms and so for me it was like yeah this is this is yeah i don't carry it as much now um oddly enough i've started carrying bigger guns which is kind of weird because i was the always the biggest proponent of like i want the smallest gun possible with mm -hmm. the most rounds possible um, I don't know what has happened. I don't know. I'm getting old or something and I'm able to carry bigger guns. I don't know. What are you carrying currently? Um, right now I'm going back and forth between the, um, I have a six hour, um, X macro, macro X macro, but it's on a mischief, uh, alloy frame. Okay. And then, uh, the Springfield Hellcat pro and, uh, the staccato CS. Mm -hmm. And if I really, 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 really want to go small, like the smallest I really go is about six out P365. I and just, then sometimes I'll do the um, the FN reflex. I'm kind of curious, like whenever you you have like all these different makes and models of guns and you use mm -hmm. it for carry, like how do people, like I never understood and um, like why or how people are able to do that. Like for me, if I'm going to carry a Glock, then I'm going to carry, the, carry same the same, mm -hmm. the same Glock or at least the same platform, the same. So. You know, I always tell people when people ask me, I, I do believe that I'm a believer in a rotation system. Um, and that's largely because I find myself in various situations where I'm not always, I'm always trying to maximize how much gun I have. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I can put it, if I can, like if I'm going to the gym, when I go to the gym, I don't carry on body. Um, so I can carry it in a bag. So if I'm carrying the bag, I'm gonna carry a bigger gun as I possibly can. Yeah. So that'd be like, so this is the gym gun, right? <laughs> and then, um, or if I'm, like my t-shirt, this is about to sound really gay. Um, like, depending on how I'm wearing my t-shirt, am I wearing it more fitted that day? Then okay, cool, I'll probably wear something smaller like my, um, uh, like that's X macro. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm wearing something that has a bit of a more baggier cut, then I can get away with running a CS, yeah. staccato. And you're, you make a great point um, because I tell people all the time, I am a proponent of having a rotation, I just, understand the limitations that come with it mm. because you do have to know those guns intimately yeah. and I've shot those guns a lot especially considering I'm going like one of the guns has a frame mount of safety on it right um, and so the interesting thing is sometimes when I'm running drills with the guns that don't have safeties I still sweep off for the safety because I've run drills with that staccato so much and so it's not the most ad it's not the most advisable thing to do um I do do it, but a lot of it too still comes down with me having to review different guns. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly reviewing different guns. So it's hard. So I, I kind of have to, I'm always rotating anyway. So I'm like, I, I want to know how this is going to carry and things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm kind of forced to in a way. Yeah. Um, you feel like training and everything. Exactly. Like yeah. So like, like if we'll go out to the range sometimes and then after we're done filming, if I'm not dead beat tired, then I'll go out and run some drills real quick, get some reps in. Mm -hmm. um, especially if like, or right before I go out, I'll put it on I'll get a couple draws in to make sure that it pulls from you know does what it needs to do or I remember okay I need to drop the safety on this one so forth and so on um, but most people are not getting that level of shooting time or training so mm -hmm. I, that's why I wouldn't necessarily advise it unless you can actually train with all of the guns that you have and then yeah. understand and going back and forth um, but I do agree with you I think in an ideal world you find the smallest gun that you can carry all the time that gives you enough confidence to feel like you can deal with something yeah. but I'm a capacity whore 
Yeah, I mean, so I, I, want, I, I, want, I want all the bullets in the world. I, I agree with you. Like on certain days, like if, if I have a gym bag too, or if yeah. I'm carrying, like if I'm wearing something baggy, then I'll then you'll carry a 19 or, yeah. you know. So from a female standpoint, um, I recently did a video about girls carrying guns in their purse. Um, how do you, how do you guys handle carrying? Cause I, I've, I've always, I've learned the hard way that carrying a gun for a woman is not exactly the easiest thing in the world, especially on body. So how do you go, how do you guys go about doing that? Um, I mean, lately I've been going for the fanny pack. Mm -hmm. So I've been using the Lena Michelic Vertex, mm -hmm. um, fanny pack. Um, I mean, I feel like as long as you're practicing your draws and you know, like you're comfortable with it, mm -hmm. I think that's okay. And then the thing with that is like, you can't set it down really. You have to have, yeah. kind of have it on you that's at the thing all about, times. Yeah. Um, it is kind of harder for a female to carry like on body all the time, just because. Yeah. Unless you're just super casual that day. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. Yeah. And in you, same way? Yeah, I've, I've been using the fanny pack pretty often too, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I prefer on body um, appendix carry. And okay. I'm like casual. This is me. Anyway. You, okay, gotcha. So, so it's, a lot, it's, it's easier yeah, for you. Yeah, I work from home, and so it's, yeah, it's easy. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. So you appendix carry? Mm hmm. Okay. Did you always appendix carry? Is that how you started out? That's how I started out. Really? Yeah. Because most people are terrified. I did like for me. I, it took me a while. I started carrying at three o'clock, mm -hmm. and then over time, I got to appendix, and then now I'm like all appendix in. Like I won't carry it. I hate carrying at three o'clock now. Like I'm like, how how did I ever do this? Um, but yeah. I, but everybody else that I know, they're not carrying appendix. Peter, do you carry appendix? Yep. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Peter carries appendix. <laughs> yeah, I found like I've, I haven't really explored too much with other p positions. Mm -hmm. um, appendix, I'm able to conceal the best. Okay. Um, we have like women have like this uh, fat pad, on, you know. So it's like it's it's just easier to, yeah. to conceal. Um, gotcha. And so yeah, I want to say I, I want to say I have like six different like different tools to help yep. me carry. So I really? have like. Like the Hunter Constantine mm -hmm. belt, and then I have like the um, Comfort Concealment, gotcha. the Enigma, yeah, yeah. Like the Flashbang holsters. So there's like different holsters for and, all know, belts that I use with different Which outfits. makes sense. I mean, just even you guys' as clothes options, except for you because you always stay casual. But, you know, if you look at a girl's closet, there's all like these little pieces of fabric. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, that's a, that's a shirt. Oh, yeah. Whereas guys, it's a t-shirt, pants, and shoes. That's it. Um, but I do carry off body too quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll kind of have a sling or something like that, that, um, I'll kind of carry. They're not really designed for it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I kind of do it understanding the limitations that come with it, you know? And I think that's one of the big things that people like how they decide to carry is understand the limitations that come with this, the way that they carry. Cause I yeah. think people are kind of delusional sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I can get to my back fast enough. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but not always. Um, but I will say we kind of do live in a golden age of concealed carry bags now because before when I got into the space, there was nothing. I mean, there were some things, but they were all like bags. Yeah. But yeah. like the kind of little carry pouches and things yeah. like that. And I, I'm not quite there yet to wear a fanny pack. I feel I like um, that's kind of more like within the past, like only the yeah, last year. Very much so. Where like yeah. all these bags started coming yep. out. And I think a lot of it was done by way of so many people getting into this, getting into firearm space now. Mm -hmm. So like now you had more because before the firearm space was a little bit more. I don't want to say clicky, but it was definitely in its own little world. Um, and it's become a little bit more commercialized now um, and more mainstream, more or yeah. less. Um, and so you have all these people like coming up with ideas. All right. Well, how do people carry on a day to day basis? I live in a city. So I life is very dynamic. It's to be different if I lived in the middle of nowhere and it's like, yeah, I can keep a rifle in my truck and, you know, yeah. carry it, open carry and do whatever. I and mean, you can open carry here, but I'm just not, I'm not an open carry person. Yeah. yeah so no, I'm going to take it. None of you guys would ever open no. carry. No. no. <laughs> Why not? What's wrong with open carry? <laughs> but so what competitions do you have coming up in Reese, like, anytime soon or is it are, yeah. like what is that like what is the schedule like for like a competitive shooter like between each competition um so i have carry optics nationals coming mm -hmm. up in two weeks that's going to be in ohio so everyone's going to come all over the nation we're going to shoot the nationals match and this is actually the last qualifier so there's um there's four qualifiers total you just need three to be able to make it to the world shoot mm -hmm. the world shoot is like our um olympics it happens every three years okay. um, and the best of the best get to make it to team usa so and represent team usa so this is the last qualifier um for to make it to the uh 
to the world shoot. And so okay. um, it's going to so be a this very is, important one. I always get this wrong. It's USPSA? Yeah, USPSA, United States Pistol Practical, Practical Shooting Association. Shooting Association. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna butcher that again. I promise yeah. you. Yeah. And then there's there's US. So there's USPSA, and yeah. then what's the other ones? And then there's IPSC, which is the um, I guess it's the the parent association okay. of USPSA. It's mm-hmm. the international one. Okay. I don't know what it stands for. International shooting. International pistol. Practical. International practical shooting. I have no <laughs> idea. How about international pistol competition? Mm, I don't know, know. Something like that. Just say IPSC. Yeah, IPSC. IPSC. Oh, IPSC. Okay. Yeah. All right. I never knew what it meant either. I just knew IPSC. Yeah. So, okay. So, what is the difference between the shooting style difference between USBSA and IPSC? So, from my experience, I don't have too much IPSC experience. I've mm. only had uh, two matches okay. under my belt so far um, for IPSC. Um, main differences are rules mm-hmm. so like how you can set up your belt rig your gun um most of most parts of the gun has to be pretty much um oem so you can't have like an aftermarket okay. um mag release for example in uh, ipsc and then shooting style wise like it's um i would say like for uspsa it's a lot more like faster shooting and like a lot of blending positions and things like that gotcha. whereas ipsc it's it to me what it seems like it's a little bit more um at least overseas um it seems to be more like positional and then get really accurate hits gotcha okay so basically it's like kind of running and gunning versus i don't know very accuracy yeah. based See, and, kind of like yeah. okay that makes yeah. sense i mean like, everyone it's, it's always it's also time based too but okay. um it seems to be more positional is what i from my experience and gotcha. some of the rules are like with ipsic you only have four minutes to walk like um Oh, before your stage, stage. Uh, you can't pre-walk okay. it. Gotcha. So with USPSA, you can pre-walk it. You can come like the day ahead of time and you know plan oh, so your stages and stuff gotcha. like that. Oh, no, um, that's USP. That's a uh, USPSA. You can come ahead of time. You can come ahead of time and walk oh, okay. your stages. Gotcha, but you can't with IPSIG. Yeah, IPSIG, you only get the four minutes while you're like when gotcha. you see the stage. That's a big. That's a big. Uh, I, was, I was gonna get in that because yeah. I didn't realize it wasn't until I thought about shooting competition when I realized how much goes in, like the very finite aspect, like down to how you step, how you walk, how you, like yeah. everything. And I'm like, holy, like, this, is, yeah. this is like, and so is that, is that something you're practicing until the point where it just becomes muscle memory or is, are you actually thinking about these things as you're shooting as well? So they so. call it like the subconscious versus, versus the conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you're shooting a stage, you kind of want everything to be a subconscious type of thinking where everything is just, you know, memorized, gotcha. choreographed, um, and you just kind of flow through the whole stage. And that's, you know, that's, I don't know, I don't think. Yeah, so pretty much it's like you want to know your plan, your stage plan subconsciously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the only thing you want to be thinking about is like, maybe that one thing you need to focus on, like whether it's like your grip or whether it's like seeing your dot in the middle of the target, Mm -hmm. but it should just be like one thing that you're Mm -hmm. thinking about. So are are you guys at a point where the moment you break the shot, you know whether or not you broke it clean or not? Is that that registering or is it kind of like you- You're talking about like shot calling. More or less. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm still. That's something I'm still working on. Mm-hmm. Um, shot calling is just being able to like. So if you're having two shots on paper, for example, if I knew I missed one, your next shot should pretty much be immediate. Gotcha. And you don't have to okay. you don't have think to about, think it. about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not anywhere close to that. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I do a lot of instinctive shooting. Mm-hmm. So how much of that? How much of that actually plays into? Because I'm not, I don't know the, the exact distances more or less, but at any point is are you instinctive shooting or is it everything you're you're watching your dot every single time i think there's like depends on the target okay and you're, like you're you know the the stage and the targets gotcha because um, i know it for me anything five to seven yards i'm 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 not really using i'm not using oh, so you're talking about like um, reactive shooting kind of more or less, versus yeah. predictive shooting. So yeah. like predictive, you 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 know what your shots and where your shot placements will go at five yards if you're just doing a quick 15 second split or something mm-hmm. like that. You know it's going to be like your grouping is going to be this size. So that's that would be called um, predictive shooting. Okay. Reactive shooting is like I'm going to see where my dot comes back and then my next shot's going to come back whenever my dot comes back as well. Gotcha. I think, so I'm going to explain to you how it happens in my brain and you can tell me where it fits in. So at those distances, distances for me, I'm watching the reaction on a target. And then within that microsecond, I'm, I'm making adjustments to 
tighten the group up as much as I can, but I'm not utilizing any optics. I'm, I'm literally just watching the target. And mm -hmm. then my body mechanic is just doing whatever need corrections it needs to make, whether it's be my hand stance, whatever, within that time period to get back on target. So is that predictive or reactive? <laughs> I don't know. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess that's like a mix. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. That's, I'm a weirdo. I, I think that's a little bit different from what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I think for what you were referring to is just, just being able to make those like quick adjustments and corrections uh, as you're shooting. So, gotcha, gotcha. Just by feel, so. Yeah, and I think, I think the reason why that works for me is because I tend to, overshoot, I, I tend to overthink. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I don't shoot well when I do that. And so when I kind of just let my body do what it does, um, I tend to shoot better. The problem is, is you can't consciously try to let your body do what it does because then you're overthinking. Yeah. So it's <laughs> like that weird kind of inability to find the flow state. You got It's there, mm -hmm. but you know, life. Yeah. And I think I dealt, one of my biggest issues was shooting steel initially. Now I love it. But before I could not shoot steel, I would miss the entire target no matter how close I was. Do you know why you missed? Steel? I think I was waiting for the response instead mm -hmm. of shoot, mm -hmm. instead of following through and engaging in my, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fundamentals. Yeah. And so I'm like, I want to hear it. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. all probably slapping the trigger, coming off the target, doing all those things, and then not um, actually doing what I need to do, hit the steel in anticipation of hitting the steel. Yeah. And um, I think over time, and then it would cause a kind of a cascading effect where when I wouldn't hear the hit, it would, it would just like another punch gut. And like, oh, I didn't hear, I didn't hear, and, 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 and then it yeah. just kind of builds on itself, and it just, it just turned into a shit show. Mm -hmm. But now I love steel. I shoot steel all the time good now. Practice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. I um, personally, if I had to, I would only shoot steel. But I also know that there, it's, it's incredibly like important instant to instant gratification. Exactly. Remember, yeah. I told you, yeah. I have instant gratification. <laughs> so, but no, um, I really appreciate it, you guys. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, whenever your next competition is, because you never told me. Uh, no, you did tell yes, me. I you did. did tell me. Yes, yeah, you did. No, you just, yeah, absolutely. Two, two, two weeks. Um, right now. I'll let you know about that. Uh, that infinity. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll let you know. It was a good looking gun. Oh, but no, but I definitely thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. And we all love hoodie season, right? So that's why I came out with the Keep America tactical design in our new premium embroidered hoodies that you can see here, just looking all soft and luscious. You see, right now I'm wearing the Keep Texas tactical because you know I'm in the great state of Texas. I also have my Keep Texas tactical hat because I'm in the great state of Texas. And when I go vote, I'm gonna wear this to the voting booth. Yep. Keep, keep Texas tactical and keep America tactical. Now, the beautiful thing is I actually have these in all 50 states. So whatever state you live in, I have a version of it in this beautiful premium embroidered hoodie. And the same thing with this hat. So that when you go and you vote, people know you are voting to protect your constitutional rights, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. So I'm going to put a link in the description section of this video that you can click to get your Keep America Tactical state specific design in this premium embroidered hoodie and this hat and drinkware and in t-shirts. So hit the link, leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later.